But this is Brendan from last year explaining the whole Chris thing. Bring him here. How do you uh, figure out, like with Chris coming on, how does that business side of it work? You come in and he's like, hey, I should probably start getting paid. Then Patreon, you guys are doing You know, he's talking about that Brinks truck too. You know, he wants to get paid paid. Who's that? Chris. He's he deserves it though. Truck. He, des he yeah. deserves it because, you know, the, the Patreon, because we, so, you know, King of Sting's a proven commodity. It's a proven show yeah. that we've been doing for four years, getting big boy money. So he gets a smaller salary from that. He's paid his employee. But then Patreon, the three of us started together. Right. So it, that split three ways across the board. Yeah. When, when you were, when Chris was dealing with all that stuff, that's the last time you were on this pod. Mm -hmm. And so with that process, he was dealing with all the, everyone trying to cancel him thing for all that stuff. When did you? <laughs> all that stuff. <laughs> Can you please explain? Could you please clarify what all that stuff is? What is all that stuff? Messaging 17 year olds? cheating on your wife one million times that's not what people don't talk about often there's enough as well like can can you question somebody's loyalty to their best friend when allegedly supposedly according to the allegations they may have cheated on the mother of their children like one million times is there not a part of you as a dude that's like you know what i'm not kind of down for that i'm not gonna lie it's like a guy that tries to be like i've had some friends like that too that try to involve you in their lies and their schemes no 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 if you want to do what you want to do do it by yourself but don't try and get me involved because i actually don't mind your girlfriend i think she's kind of lovely i think she's nice i don't want to have to look her in the face and know that i'm keeping the secret you know what i mean i don't want to be don't be involved in your conspiracy like please especially if it's a long-term partner <laughs> you know what i mean like it's not some like skeezy on the road this is like somebody that you actually call a wife and you want to nah anyway let's continue do you guys decide when did he decide and did you guys talk about when he can kind of like creep back into the world he used to live in? creep back in no pun intended it's up to him yeah good question it was up to him because um chris was so hurt by everything that happened i can't imagine what he went through as fans we were <laughs> Chris was the real victim here. Not all these young, impressionable um, women who were essentially taken advantage of because they were in a very fragile mental state. No, none of those women that had to get brandished with his initials on them in order to prove their love to him. None of these women who have to fucking embarrass themselves and humili humiliate themselves by sending, them, sending pictures of themselves on a somewhat hourly basis to Chris to prove that they were still one of his quote unquote babies. No, they're not the victims. Not the literal children. <laughs> Chris D'Elia. Gotta love it. Sitting there like, damn. Bro like, broken you hope hearted. it's not true. And, and it's not. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, yeah. I'll argue. And if you want to argue, I'd love to do it. No, no I'm... Right. What? Hold on. What did you say? What did you say? What did you say? True. And, and it's not. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, yeah. I'll argue. And if you want... That's what I'm curious about. Hot take. If your friend gets accused of what Chris D'Elia has been accused of, and you still want to be their friend, that's your prerogative. So you want to do business with them? That's your prerogative. But dying on the hill of it's not true i believe my friend is fucking insane because you weren't there you don't know and also if it then transpires that it was true you're risking your career for your friendship and you should never do that i remember in the beginning when the whole thing went down with brian callen and shit for a long time i was like why isn't joe saying anything joe's been going like the louis ck shit happened right Joe did not shut up about the Louis C.K. shit. He was all the time talking about the Louis C.K. situation. The two female comedians agreed to it. It's a kink that Louis C.K. has. It's well known. Cancel culture is bullshit. Like he was going on and on about the Louis C.K. cancellation. He wouldn't shut the fuck up about it. Eventually, it transpired that maybe the allegations about Louis C.K. weren't what they first was fucking intimated. Fair enough. And he essentially got welcomed back into the fold or he just came back into the fold. No one really cared. And he's still a beast of a comic. One of my favorites, clearly. But at the time, Rogan didn't shut up about it. Then it happened. Then a similar situation happens to Brian Callen. Don't get me wrong. Not the same type of offense. You know, asking two female comics if you can jerk off in front of them, whatever it may be, however gross that is, is definitely not the same as allegedly raping people. I understand. But I just couldn't understand why Joe wouldn't speak up for Brian Callen when he was going to arms for Louis C.K. and defending him at every fucking point and talking about how how flipping unfair it was and whatever it may be. But then I remembered, I got, I got, I wised up. I kind of put my big point pants on. I was like, you know what? Why would you, if you're Joe Rogan, go out on a limb for Brian Callen and say that he didn't do what he's been accused of? When that could put in jeopardy your own 
career and your own platform. Why would you risk that? You don't know if that's true. You hope it isn't because it's your friend. Of course, you're going to hope it isn't. But you don't know if it's true. So you're not, it would be really foolish to go out there and to platform him, quote unquote, to fight him, to, to, to fight for him, to plead his innocence when you know, when you don't know if it's not true. Then you have to add another caveat to it. At the same time that Brian Callan shit was going down, I'm pretty sure it might have been the same time that Rogan was actually initially negotiating with Spotify. So what are you going to do? Are you going to defend Brian Callan and risk one of the biggest paydays you've ever had? $300 million for a licensing deal on fucking Spotify where after the deal ends, you can take your fucking IP back and do whatever you want with your podcast? Of course not. So it made complete sense why Rogan, like an adult, decided long-term, I'm going to look after myself and my family and my future and I'm going to shut the fuck up about it. And he hasn't spoke about it ever. He's never, he's, he, I think there was a period of time after the the Callan rape went down, he didn't mention Brian Callan's name for like a year, stretch, a year, one year stretch. And Brian Callan's meant to be one of his best friends. They've been friends for like 30 plus years. They essentially started stand up around the same sort of time. He didn't mention his name for one year. And it makes sense because he had 300 million on the line, generational money. He's making a lot of money now, but that's the kind of money that can set up your kids, 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 kids. But Brendan's here fighting Chris Alia's case when there's like potentially hundreds of victims and he's only been Chris Alia's friend for what? Maybe 10 years? I say less. Maybe 10, but I say less. And he's fighting, pleading for his case and essentially putting his family's future on the line for Chris Alia who's a fucking Nepo baby as well, by the way. Even if he does get completely cancelled, he's fine. He's not going to come out and work at Target ever. His family's got him. And also, the other really cruel irony of this is, if the roles were reversed, God forbid, because I don't want it to happen to him, but if the roles were reversed and Brendan Shaw was accused of diddling, of abusing women, of having cults, all this shit, do you think Chris Lear would be on podcast defending him? I don't. <laughs> he wouldn't say a sh he wouldn't say a fucking word do you think he'd have him on it do you think they he'd create a show with him and do it together i don't do you think he'd be a guest on the fire and the kid i don't so brendan is either incredibly loyal or incredibly redacted or maybe both if you want to argue i'd love to do it no, no I, I, we're on your side i know, I know that's why it's, it's i'm hard to navigate wanna, i'm saying for yeah. the listeners out there i'm telling yeah. you people that oh this this Prove it. Show, show me one shred of fucking evidence. Right. Dude. And I, I'll never work with the guy again. You yeah. Can't. Hold on. So you need to see evidence to prove that he did it and then you won't work with him. But you only work with him because there's no evidence. So what? You don't actually believe him. <laughs> I'm confused. Estoy muy confid, confis, confid, confido. How you say it in Spanish? Is it concido, confido? Estoy muy concido. Spanish speaking people in the chat, let me know. When you if you say I'm confused, is it estoy? Or yo estoy muy confido, confidudo. Am I saying that right? I'm probably not. Please help me. Esto es, is that how you say it? Estoy muy confidudo. Is that the word? How you say it? I'm sure there's at least con how do you say that? How's that word say? Confondido. Confundido. Estoy muy confundido. Muy bien. <laughs> you can't. Yeah. But, you know, these certain uh, media outlets, they're not writing that story because they found because nothing. They already doubled down. They already on doubled down. They were, this guy's the worst ever. Well, we're, what happened? Well, but we have proof. However, <laughs> Santana, pick on the guy. That a lot of that was doctored and fake, and he sued them and won. Where's, where's, the, the, where's that article? Right. So for Chris was so hurt by the business and friends turning his back on him. You know, he was a hermit for oh, fuck, dude, about a year. And I'd go to his house and talk to him. And uh, every month I'd send him a pair of shoes with a note that says, get back on stage, start doing your podcast. Mm -hmm. every, every month I'd send him, because he's a sneakerhead like me. <sighs> this is so pathetic. I bet you there's not a single person in Brenda Shaw's family, close family and close friends that he's done this for. And he's met this guy, what, in his mid-30s? And you're sending him shoes, telling him to go back on stage. Hey, dude, just send you a pair of shoes so you can go and run after kids at recess. Sorry, so you can get back on stage. 
Excuse me? Every month I'd send him a new pair of shoes. He'd open up to have a note, get back on stage, start doing your podcast. Right. Every fucking month. And he was like, I'm not ready, not ready. And then finally, after time, you know, I think, you know, he worked on himself a ton. You want to talk about a guy who's the poster boy of cancel culture? This is how it should work. <laughs> it's fucking- I don't think he's got that term right, by the way. Poster boy of cancel culture. Hmm. So you mean he should be getting canceled? Is that what you mean? <laughs> The poster boy of cancel culture. What kind of term is this? <laughs> Go, <Call> Mr. Diche. <laughs> Rapist on the poster. Can Chris D'Elia made some mistakes? No doubt, man. In- yeah, but everybody makes mistakes. No, correct. Yeah. yeah, every every day. Um, I just accidentally DM seventeen year olds from time to time. Like, oh fuck, not again. Not again. Oh, man. What? You're 17. Whoopsie. Thought you were 71. Ha ha ha. What the fuck's he talking about? Yeah. Made some mistakes. 100%. Anything legal? Absolutely fucking not. Learned from it. Worked on himself. Does fucking three hours of therapy every single day. Three hours of therapy makes the pedo go away. <laughs> He's such a better person now. He should be the poster boy of cancer culture. He- what? So it was. So he's basically trying to say the cancer culture was a good thing because it got him to work on himself. But the unfortunate thing about this is that the documentary and the further article from Rolling Stones has been able to prove, and even Chris admitting that he went to therapy recently, that he was still doing the same shit just a year ago or even a few months ago. He was still doing the same shit. So all of this three hours of therapy a day, you know, press X for doubt on that one. Everything press X for doubt. Even the sending of the shoes once per month. Press X for doubt. Do you remember when he started the Shorb Show? Brendan said he would change the shoe on the shelf every month. He didn't change it once. <laughs> I think it was like a Yeezy or something. He didn't change that shoe once. And he's trying to make me believe that he changed, He gave. He sent the, that guy a pair of shoes. A pair of fakes every month. Yeah, all right. He's a better person, better human being, better dad. Like he had a, a kid throughout all. Hey, da- hey, hey, son. Hi, Daddy. Why are you crying? Oh, man. Sorry, son. I'm just crying because I've just realized how much of a better dad I am now that I'm not messaging 17 year olds. It really helps. All this. And, you know, I I, make it so fucking hard. I knew Chris before all this happened. And, you know, Chris was tough, man. Chris was tough. He was a dark soul and just, you know, tough, not a real human being. Like, he was a bit of a narcissist. And I love a bit of a narcissist. him and he's so talented i fucking love him now chris is a real dude man mm. he would, the salt of the earth would do anything for you man so all it took was him being exposed as a potential pedo a, an abuser a creep for them to suddenly turn into a human being he shed the skin of narcissism okay and he had to go through that experience he came out like fucking Andy frame from shawshank redemption and fucking you know he crawled through some shit you know, I'm Ms. Morgan Freeman in Mexico in St. Guatana or whatever the fuck it is. Yeah. And uh, Theo's there too. So it's like. And Theo's there too. Like they've yeah. all played this. It's yeah, we're, we're a little joke. Like, I'm Ms. Morgan. Yeah, and we're just, me and Theo, we're standing stand the boat down yeah. for him, you know, to <laughs> get away from him. Yeah. So um, it's just, that was a tough time, man. Yeah. And I, I think for me, I struggled with it too. Sorry, dude. You're good. Uh, killer Boots, man. I had Thank to. You, um, that was Georgia Boot. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> you know, that was a tough time, man. Because, you know, you, I come from the same kind of, uh, uh, you know, same background as you guys where football is a team. We 100%. rally around each other. 100%. And, you know, before the pandemic, before all that cancel culture shit, we had a squad, man. We were like the comedy rap pack at the store and the podcast. Rap pack alert. It's the golden age. If everyone's making money. We're fucking balling. And we all do each other's podcasts. Pandemic hits, cancel culture hits. And to me, having football in the fight background, I'm like, oh, no, this is where we band together, dude. We fight this shit. Yeah. Everyone just went poof. But the thing was, the thing that he's mistaken council culture for, he's making it seem like the council culture shit was like they were getting cancelled for saying racy jokes on stage. That wasn't what was happening. They were all getting outed as fucking sex pests. And at the time when that shit was happening, it was like a career ender. So it's no surprise that a lot of those guys ran away and quit and moved away and kept quiet and shit. Because their careers were on the line. It was during the pandemic, bruh. Lockdown was on. People couldn't perform. 
So if your career got ended during the pandemic, it was pretty hard for you to kind of start back up again once things going. You already were hurting for money because all your gigs got cancelled. The last thing you need to do was to, you know, throw yourself on a grenade for fucking Crystalia. A guy who probably wasn't the nicest when he was, you know, up. When Chris was successful, I'm, I'm sure he wasn't the kind of guy who was extending his arm back to help people. He had his crew and that was it. And in the moment he got cancelled for essentially you know being accused of whatever he's got accused of why would you want then to go and help him out when he didn't help you out and especially for the crime that he was b being alleged to, of, to have done or whatever allegation he had against him it makes no sense it's self-preservation these people aren't your friends that's probably where he got mistaken from he thought these guys were his friends and like i keep saying it's somewhat commendable that he's disredacted that he thinks this is what friendship is but chris is only his friend now because he pays him and I guarantee you, I say this, you know, with all certainty, if Brendan Shaw was accused of what Chris Alea was accused of, Chris wouldn't spit on him if he was on fire. He legitimately wouldn't. He would say, nice knowing you, life rips, oops, and he'd keep it moving. He would not be on podcast defending him like this, let alone starting shows with him. He wouldn't. No Dude. shit. Dude, B blew my mind. Callan was dealing with something right around the same time. Yeah, Callan can come on fire in the kid, man, for a year. I You're kind of like, for, you oh, went from having a squad to being like this lawless Avenger rolling around by yourself. to pick up and a lot of... Anyway, that's the clip. Fucking insane. Um, Brendan's out here fucking, you know, trying to defend and fight for Chris Alia's honor. This clip is obviously from a year ago, so don't be confused and think it's a something's happened recently. But if you have any confusion as to, or doubt as to what Brendan's mindset is and what he thinks about the allegations, that's probably what he thinks about them now. I guarantee you, he probably thinks exactly the same thing now. Nothing has changed in the slightest, which is really, really sad, upsetting, and makes me absolutely mad.